Okay, YouTube, this is Saturday, July 27th. It's been almost two months since I made a video, so this is going to be kind of a, hopefully a short catch-up video to what I've been up to. Um, I, I haven't been racing any more than what you've seen that I put on YouTube the three times, but it, which sounds like I've missed a lot this year, but actually I haven't. Uh, we've had the track closed due to extremely hot weather, rainy, lots of rain, which actually the rain has finally calmed down for the first time in about six or seven years for the past month or so. It's actually acting like a normal hot summer. So um, that's kind of a good thing. I was getting so tired of the rain. Now everybody be complaining that it's getting too dry. But I just want to show you what all I've been up to. Only thing I've done to the car, I replaced my front shocks and the reason is, I think it was this one. And, which I wiped them off, it's hard to tell. But one of them was leaking. I'll show you why. Well, it's hard to tell, I cleaned them both off. But anyway, one of them was leaking and one of them wasn't. The driver's side was leaking. Bad enough to where there was a drop of oil on the ground. And that is right in line with that rear slit. Not a good place for oil to be. They don't want any oil on the track anyway. But what caused it is I have a travel stop. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this or not. Put my hand up here. You can see. I don't know if you can see that or not, honestly. But if you can see that bolt head, it goes up through here. And there's a nut welded to the frame. And that bolt screws into the nut. And then I got another nut that locks up against the other nut that's welded and it holds it in place. And I have I have double washered it this time. But uh, what happened was it got to where it was letting control arm travel too far. And what happens when that control arm travels too far, the weight of the of everything from here on out all rests on that shock, meaning the shock gets extended to its fully extended length. And when the car pulls the wheels, the weight of that puts all of that weight on the shock, and these little shocks can't take that. So you got it's it's a good idea to have a travel stop, and that's probably why that one leaked, because the other one, the travel stop was still adjusted right. And the reason it got out of adjustment, I showed you the double washers, if you could see it in the dark. I should have gotten a light under there. As you can see, I only had one washer on it, and it beveled out. For some reason, I had double washered that one, but did not do that one that way. I don't know. Maybe it's something I intended to go back and, and correct and forgot about. But we got that on there. Maybe it'll make a difference. I did lose a little weight on it. I got rid of my windshield wipers. I put them on way back when I used to race every single weekend. Thought it would be cool to have um, windshield wipers on a race car. And I was looking for excuse ways to add weight because at the time there's very strict on going 639 and quicker and this car was running in the in the 20s and 620s and 630s and they was really cracking down hard on people who didn't go through the whole certification process which I didn't want to spend the money on so I added weight and slowed the car down but since the car for some reason does not run like it used to which I still got a lot of weight in it and I don't think I added all that weight in hot weather that could be why but I decided to go ahead and take a little bit of that back out. And they're not as strict on it now, so it won't hurt me to go a little quicker. And I added a voltage, voltage gauge. Did a little cleanup on the dash. If you notice, it looks a little cleaner. I repainted. This part here is supposed to be chrome originally. But mine was peeling off and looked terrible. So I just repainted it with a uh, metallic silver. And it looks better. Redid my switch panel here. I had an extra hole. Clean, that cleaned up a little bit and which I actually and I also I used to have my uh, ventilation fan or right here oscillating fan or whatever I used to have it hooked to the ignition switch it's not anymore now the just only the gauge and the starter is all the ignition switch does it doesn't turn on the ignition but we put a voltage gauge voltage gauge on it and and the fan is now hooked to the wiper switch that way I can get a kind of original look and it's functional. It does, serves its purpose. And I'm curious to see if it's still consistent as it was after we put the new MSD box in. 
So that's pretty much all we did. I'm going to be loading this up here in a little bit. Something else I've been up to. The hot weather kind of slowed me down on this project, but it didn't stop me. Something I've been wanting to do for a while, if you remember, the uh, Harbor Freight tent I had, I finally decided to quit replacing the canvas on it because the sun was just uh, rotting it within about two years. I started building a lean-to, nowhere near done yet, but at least it's coming along. Spent a very hot vacation setting post holes, and I made a few mistakes. I'm no builder, but um, it's going to serve its purpose, and it will hold up. As you can see, the sun has warped that treated post. But I got four more, and if, you, if it looks like the roof is crooked there, it is, because this stupid beam here is warped. I should have flipped it the other way or not used it uh, when I picked out my lumber. Uh, I didn't catch it when we was loading it. So that's just going to be crooked, but whenever I get a roof on it, nobody's going to see it. I don't really care. A lot of stuff is crooked, you know, like that beam there is going that away. But it's going to serve its purpose. It's going to be a lot better in the tent. I will eventually enclose it. Uh, after I get the roof on it, I will try to right away get a wall on there. I'm going to do a metal roof, metal siding. And it's, it's 30 by 20, so... It's pretty much like having another small garage. That way I can get my lawn equipment in here, keep the truck out of the hot sun and rain, tractor will fit in here, and the race car will go back in the enclosed trailer, which I'm wanting to move over there to the other side of the other lean-to, which is rotting away. Because it's kind of an eyesore from the road, and I want the trailer to block it until I can get around to making it look better. And I would like to add... I would like to eventually, when I get everything out of there, tear it down and kind of extend the garage out. So, maybe two cars over. Have room for all kinds of stuff in there. But, that's what I've been up to. Um, I'm going to load the car and try my luck at racing. I'll probably be a sitting duck. Haven't hit the, uh, haven't even had any kind of practice for two months. So, we'll see.
Okay, something else I failed to mention that I've done is I uh, repainted my front bumper. You remember it was all scratched up and chipped. And what happened was I had a little accident loading it up and I cracked it. I t got rid of my spare tire. I had my spare tire mounted right here. I uh, tuck it off and now I just throw it back there when I need it. And got rid of that. Put a stop on there. Not a big one. Just old 2 by 4 Bolted on. Some nuts on the back and I can take it off when I don't want it on there. But it turned out pretty good for um, doing it in a dirty old garage. I wet the floor down and luckily it was raining a lot when I was doing it. So not a lot of dust. For doing it in a dirty old garage and having leftover paint and clear coat. Pretty much all I had to buy was a, a fiberglass kit. Because it, it was broken bad. I wish I had some picks. Maybe I still do. I don't know if I delete them. But it was cracked completely in half here. Or actually here. And here. And there. It was barely hanging on by a little bit. And actually, I think... I, don't, I can't remember if that dent was always there or not. It might have done that too. But it messed it up pretty bad. But it looks a lot better than it did before it was broke. Now, the only thing I had to buy was, like I said, the fiberglass kit. I had the leftover paint and clear coat. And I had to buy some primer. I didn't have any urethane primer. So, uh, yeah. I'm kind of glad. I, I'm, I'm not glad that it broke, but I'm glad that uh, I got to paint it. And I got rid of And this is nowhere near as flimsy as it used to be. Originally, this car had a steel brace that went like this down to the fender. And then there was another steel strap that went from here to the original frame. And, of course, that is not the original frame. And all I did was I made a little aluminum bracket, bent it up, and fiberglassed it to the bumper, and I bolted it to the fender. Even though it's not braced to the frame, it's a lot less move and shake to it, and it stays kind of straight. It used to be kind of angled down, looked sloppy, but they just made the rest of the car look like it need painted. <laughs> it makes the whole car look better, though. But, uh, all right, enough yapping. The next video, there will be some racing, unless some catastrophe happens.